since I've had this car, it's really not had a chance to cool down. The engine, the brakes, the tires. I've literally not put the keys down for more than a few hours at a time, and that includes in the evenings. In fact, I probably look quite tired today because I was up at the crack of dawn to go and enjoy this car before I switched the cameras on because it's just so involving. It's so alive and I'm really in driving heaven right now. This car is just brilliant. I knew it would be. I really knew it would be. Now I'm sure you're expecting me to compare this to my manual M2 competition. And I guess there are some similarities between the two cars, but in reality, they're different packages and they're at massively different price points. Firstly, the M2 competition is no longer available. I think order books closed for them about three or four months ago, December time. And if we rewind to December, a manual M2 comp would cost you just over 50 grand. Once you factor in the BMW contributions or discounts, you're looking at about 44, 45,000 pounds for a manual M2 competition. This Cayman GTS 4 litre, well, it's 65 odd grand, and you're very unlikely to get any kind of discount out of Porsche. You'd be lucky to get a full tank of 98 octane. So when you compare the two cars like that, there's £20,000 worth of difference in price. More so if you compare the second-hand market because these hold their value so well and in fact, online you'd be lucky to find one less than about 60 grand, whereas you're gonna find an M2 comp in manual, year old, for just under £40,000. So comparing those two in terms of price really isn't fair and also, in terms of what the car, what the purpose is of the car, because a lot of people have always asked me with my M2 Comp, why don't you get a Cayman GT4 or this new GTS if you love it so much? And my answer is always that my M2 Competition gives you four seats, like four proper seats. You can get two adults in the back. You've also got a really big boot, and if you fold down the rear seat in my M2 Comp, I can throw in two large mountain bikes. You can't do that in this car. It's reasonably practical for a two-seater sports car. For me, and for what I use my car as a daily, this Cayman would just be an addition to something else. It wouldn't do all of the jobs that I want it to do. It does one or two of them better than the M2 Comp, but it doesn't fulfill the purposes that I want my daily to have. Let's just enjoy this little bit here. Listen to that. In fact, price-wise, we can actually compare one of these to the brand new G82 M4 competition, which you would think would be in a totally different price bracket. I mean, that car is well over 500 horsepower. Obviously, it's got the four seats. It's got loads of stand equipment for that 76 odd grand. You might be thinking 76, but this is 65. You're gonna get close to 10,000 pound discount again through BMW on that brand new M4. So that brings it down in line with this car. Now, they're totally different propositions, mind. The M4 compared to this is almost more of a GT car, even though I think the M4 is totally capable and very sports car like. When you compare it to this, 400 kilo lighter, much smaller, much more nimble, they're totally different cars. But I just wanted to point out that actually, price for price, this is much closer to the M4 or M3. And hopefully that will stop people complaining about how expensive these new cars are because they're all creeping up in price. You know, once upon a time, uh, Cayman GTS 981 was, what, about 50-odd grand brand new. Now they're 65 grand base spec. This one's 75. It's got a few toys thrown at it. 
including this beautiful python green paintwork that's about 1600 quid the bose sound system that i'd probably have for 800 quid although do you really need a bose sound system with that <laughs> probably not and there's a couple of other things scattered around here but you could strip most of that out and just buy this car for what it is for the manual gearbox the beautiful steering and that four litre Oh, that four litre. This car is really close to motoring perfection. The minute you turn the key, it just comes alive. The steering is fantastic, especially as it's an e-pass system. A lot of that, I'm sure, has to do with this lovely thin leather rim. BMW, look, thin rim, steering feel. None of this marshmallow stuff that's going on. It's just brilliant. The brakes are fantastic. The front end, the mid corner balance, the corner exit, it just finds, even with these sketchy P0s, oh, it's just brilliant. There's just so much to it. And you don't have to be pushing it hard to enjoy it. You can drive it at five or six tenths and still just enjoy that sound enjoy that gear change, enjoy the steering inputs. Everything's so delicate and accurate. There's no manhandling here. If I was driving this down the same road as say my M2 Competition, I might be wrestling the M2 Competition. Arguably, maybe I'm having more fun in that car because it is a bit more wayward, but this is just, you set the steering up and you leave it there. It's just perfection. It's very much like a race car in that sense. It's just so accurate and so nice and so rewarding as a result. This four litre, what a sound, what an engine. Yes, it's muffled by an OPF riddled exhaust system, but it still sounds very, very good. It has a red line of just under 8,000 RPM. I think it's 7,800. And maximum power is around the 7,000 mark. So everything's up there and the torque's right up there as well. I think that's about five and a half, six thousand. So you really have to wring it out to get the most out of it. But, and I knew there was gonna be a but because I've watched a lot of reviews about this car. This is where the car starts to falter a little bit. And that's why I said near perfect. It's not perfect, unfortunately. It, to me, feels like it has the same ratios and gearbox as the 981 GT4. A brilliant gearbox. I mean, in terms of the way it works, it's action, it's just lovely. Oh, it's so rewarding. It feels so good. I mean, it makes my M2 competition feel like it's made out of rubber you know it's just so beautiful the action but the ratios they're so so long second gear i've been told this obviously it wasn't me second gear is good for 85 miles an hour so on a british road when you're trying to get the most out of this engine like i said it only really rewards you sort of over five or six thousand rpm where the torque and the power is coming in you can't use those gears at legal speeds. So you can't appreciate this car really fully for what it is. Yes, it would be amazing out on a circuit like Silverstone. I'm actually off there in a couple of days in an Audi R8 and I can't wait for that. This car out there, well, must be averaging over 100 miles an hour on a lap at Silverstone. Through some of the Maggots and Beckett's complexes with this manual gearbox, you'll be third, fourth, fifth all day long. It would be fantastic. but. That's not what this car's built for. This car's built for the road, and unfortunately, these super long gears do mean that you can't extract all of the performance out of this brilliant engine. Now there is a seven speed PDK option gearbox for this car, about 2,300 pounds, and I'm in no doubt that with that extra ratio and the lightning quick PDK, you'd definitely utilize more the performance available in this car. In fact, the claim 0 to 62 time of 4.5 seconds drops to four seconds flat in a PDK GTS. So that proves that it is a fair amount quicker. 
my issue with that is this manual box as flawed as it is in terms of the actual ratios if you took that away from this car it would be like taking two cylinders away and making it a four cylinder and well we know that doesn't necessarily work with the Cayman now although I've just been complaining about the long ratios affecting the straight line performance of this car I'm not suggesting that it's slow by any means and there's two reasons for that it weighs a fraction over 1400 kilos which by today's standards is very light in fact it's 200 kilos lighter than my m2 competition the other reason is its suspension when you back the dampers off it has such a fluid ride and so that kind of disguises how fast you're going on the road because in my m2 for instance i'd be shaking about and you'd get real feel for speed but this thing just glides over everything really well almost like an alpina does it's got an amazing ride quality and that disguises the speed and also helps obviously with the handling it's just lovely <laughs> Oh, what a car. Guys, I'm going to end it there. I could leave these cameras rolling all day long, but I'm going to turn them off and enjoy this car off camera because it's just fantastic. It goes back in a couple of days and I'm going to make the most out of it. Yes, I've complained about its gearbox. It's not perfect, this car, but wow it's close to perfect and if I did only need the two seats and I did more petrol head tours and more track days which I am doing at the moment this car would tick so many of those boxes so really looking forward to getting my hands on the 718 GT4 very soon hopefully and in fact a 911 because I'm really interested to see where the 911 sits compared to this I just can't imagine a better driver's car than this it really is just brilliant 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 guys thanks a lot for watching i'm sorry if i've been a little bit overexcited potentially looking a little bit tired as well but it's all the emotions of having the keys to a gts 4 liter <laughs> it's just oh what a brilliant bit of kit what a brilliant bit of kit massive thanks for the support the love everything give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you at another one very very soon cheers